Hive, welcome to HDDC, HD Designs Crochet. I'm Heather, your host, and this is my channel all about crochet and knitting and a general yarny life. Um, I'm 28 and I live in the United Kingdom and I started this channel um, just to connect to you guys, so thank you so much for being here. If you are brand new, hi, hello and welcome. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you for coming back, guys. I love spending this time with you. So today, I'm going to talk to you all about the finishing frenzy that I've had. Um, I have four finished objects, four. And I also have information about two giveaways, two giveaways and also Yarndale. So there's quite a lot to cover. Um, you might be able to hear that I have some sort of cough, cold thing. I sound like I'm permanently out of breath because I'm not breathing very well and my throat. I don't think you're gonna find my voice very soothing today. Sorry about that. But I'm here and I wanted to do this. I didn't want the channel to suffer. So let's see how far we get. That's the uh, little Heather's Health Chronicles update. So let's see how far we can get before I need another nap. Um, so yes, I've told you about my channel. Um, I told you that I love to crochet, I love to knit, that I love yarn and that I am aspiring to be a designer. I want to live the crochet knitting life full time. Well, you know, I say that. I think I'd miss my day job if I gave it up, but I would like to be a legit crochet designer. Anyway, let's get started. I've done some notes, which are down here. Oh, I've got two giveaways. We're gonna get to them at the end. There's one for Patreon and there's one for YouTube. So make sure you stick around to find that. Um, and we're gonna go into what I'm wearing. So today, I am wearing a jumper that I made myself. Oh, this is the Crochet Candyland Jumper by Two of Wands. Um, and I have decided to wear it with the sleeves rolled up like so. I finished this, this basically, without the frogging, if they just sat and done it all in one go, pretty much a day. A day and a half done so so easy um, let me stand up to show you what it looks like it's just a giant chunky jumper and it's amazing I'm really really pleased with it okay so let's tell you the story I recorded Flash My Stash, which I'll link above for you, and I just realised how much yarn I have got in these towers, which goes even higher up than what you can see. Um, as I was going through it, I was kind of cataloguing in my mind large quantities of yarn that I could attribute, attribute? That's not the word I want, that I could allocate to a project. And so I came across this Tweedy yarn, Hopefully I've put all the scraps away and I don't want to fight with the entire tub to get it out. Lazy much. It's right at the bottom though guys, in that last tub. One, two, three, four, five, six tubs deep. I have got a swatch though. No, that's not it. So this is the Tweedy Aran that I used. It's this very neutral oatmeal colour and it's got all of these flecks in it. It's got um, like a, a very dark black. It's, well, I say very dark black, I feel like it is black, almost charcoal grey, very dark. And then it's got these um, dark oatmeal flecks. Don't know if they're fo focusing very well. Um, and it's Aran weight. And it smells really nice. It's got that, um, is it linen, linen? I can't think of the word now. Lanolin? Lanolin. It's got lan that lanolin smell, which makes it smell really sheepy. 
Um, this yarn I got, if you remember long term viewers, I picked up three balls of it when I went on my bargain high street haul, which again I can link the video. And then when that shop, the whichever pound shop went into administration, I went and got some more. So I had 800 grams of this and the pattern called for 800 grams, win, win, win. Um, the swatch I've actually done holding just one strand, but the jumper I've held two strands, so I've held it double as I've made it. Um, and I, it called for a 10 mil hook, I used a 9 mil hook. Um, and the reason I started this is because one, I wanted to use stuff out of stash, two, I really, really want um, a me made wardrobe and the more patterns that I use um, and sort of the more patterns I make rather, then the more experience I'll have um, so that I can apply what I learn into making my own garments. Um, now this is a free pattern on her blog. So I highly recommend you go look at her blog because there's some great patterns on there. And I've seen that Zines and Rogers um, have also recently made one of her jumpers. Um, I can't remember what I was about to tell you. <laughs> I think we're gonna have lots of brain fog moments. Just bear with me guys, I'm trying. Um, it needed 800 grams, it needed an, a 10 mil hook, I only had a nine mil hook. The reason I started it was it, I had the yarn I needed in my stash, it was a free project, I had the hook there about, um, and it was quite mindless in that because the pattern was there, all I had to do was follow it. It was a really simple beginner's pattern. Just what I needed as I've not been feeling well. And when I first picked it up, I cast on, I did the, the bottom, the hem, the ribbing, and about this much, and I had to put it down. Um, so I don't know if other people out there, you measure your health in terms of how much you can crochet, but I definitely do. And when I started this, I was not in a good place. And when I got it finished, I was starting to feel much, much better. I do feel much better. Um, apart from this cold, but anyway, it's not moon. Um, because I used a nine mil hook, my gauge was ever so slightly out and I think the pattern calls for like 40 something stitches and that was just colossal on me and I did actually make the entire body in the bigger size and then I got um, an entire sleeve done in the bigger size um, by bigger size I mean the amount of stitches that she's put in her pattern for the size small and then um, I realised I didn't have enough left to finish the second sleeve and join it and do the neck. So what I did was I frogged the entire thing. Yeah, I did. I frogged the entire thing. So I've technically made this jumper twice. Um, or maybe even three times. Because the first time I started making it, I didn't read it properly and I did it in single strand. And then it wasn't until I had the entire front of the body. And then I looked at hers and I looked at mine and I thought, mine doesn't look as thick. And then I realised... You should be holding it double. And also, as I was going along, I was like, this isn't eating much yarn at all. Am I really going to need 800 grams? You will if you hold it double, Heather. So, I frogged the body, the one, the... I frogged the front panel of the body, because I did it in single. And then frogged the entire body in a sleeve, because I'd done it to the larger pattern. I, I'd done it to the smallest size pattern, which had come up quite large. I was using a slightly smaller hook and I did swatch and I didn't think I'd be that far out. There we go, I was. So what I did was I did the two sleeves first um, and I made them, I think like five stitches smaller than what the pattern calls for. Um, I mean, I am only Diddy and if the jumper had been any bit bigger as it was, it would dwarf me. And the sleeves are large enough as well so I'm happy with the size I've gone for <clears throat> um, I can't believe my voice is giving out already let's keep going let's keep going um, and then I frogged the entire body I took about 20 grams to 30 grams aside to do the neck band and the 20 grams just to join it which is probably it was too generous I've got a bit left but I didn't want to run out 
and then I weighed how much I had left for the body and I divided that by two and I had decided I was going to take something like eight stitches off um, really I think maybe I should have just took six or five um, just to make it slightly bigger but I am really pleased with it <laughs> like I'm flying um, and then I split that yarn into two lots so I think I had say I had 500 grams left split it into two balls of 250 grams and then I knew that the front part of the panel front part of the body the front panel could only use 250 grams and the same with the back and I actually did have a little bit left over so I could have either put a couple more rows in which wouldn't have been a bad thing or I could have made it ever so slightly wider um, but it doesn't matter because with the tiny bit I've got left I think I've got like 50 grams or 100 grams I want to make some boot toppers um, so that when I'm wearing this jumper I've got matching boot toppers so this is the Candyland Crochet Summer Jumper it's summer jumper because she uses a slightly bigger hook and she uses yarn that's got like a cotton content so that would give it a slightly different drape and a, li a little bit more breezier I've made this out of um, two strands of Aran held double rather than double knit and a slightly smaller hook to give it that tighter um, fabric and it is really really warm so I'm really pleased with it um, and I think it looks really stylish as well and then it's just got the neck band on it it's so so simple um, so check the, the pattern out but it was written in American and I crochet in UK but that wasn't a bother to translate it um, it's got trebles at the bottom which make the slight rib detail can you see and the rest is done in double crochet and then it is um, seamed together I did put this together in double knit uh, sorry two strands two strands held double and it was too bulky so I took it apart and I just did it in this in um, a single strand which has made it sit a bit better I was a little bit annoyed because it keeps sort of shaping to my waist and then belling out but when I looked at the photos on her blog which are really nice photos hers does the same but yeah I'm I'm really pleased with it so that's what I'm wearing and that's finished object number one um, and I've got another swatch to go on my swatch board <laughs> finished object number two oh is another free pattern that I've done and it's a granny square pattern so this is the Zuma cowl by um, Potter and Bloom. I really, really want to say Plotter and Boom, and it's not. It's not Heather. It's Potter and Bloom because her surname is Potter, not Plotter. Anyway, oh, I forgot to say I put my tag on here, as I do, and there's a tag on this one as well, and they're from JSL Lasercraft. And I've only got one left, so I'm going to have to order some more. So this is the Zuma Cow, Z-U-M-A, and it's a free pattern on Emma's blog. Um, and I was actually on there looking at sock patterns, and I saw this, and I just thought, I've got to make it. I love it. It's so warm, and it took me, like, <sighs> I don't even know how long to save it. I'm going to say like two hours because it was two episodes of Once Upon a Time on Netflix. Um, now it calls for super chunky yarn. I've got a little bit of that in my stash but not colours that I really wanted to use. So what I did was I held three strands of double knit together. Um, and again it called for a 10 mil hook which I don't have so I used my 9 mil. So I don't know if my sizing's slightly out compared to Emma's, but I'm still really pleased with it. Um, and in her pattern, she used a blue and a pink, and I've used um, that autumnal burnt orange and a very pale pink. 
The yarns are, all of them are Starcraft bar the autumnal colour. So that grey is graphite, that is plum, that is grape and that is pale rose. That pink is very similar to the pink that I used for my summer's dusk shrug. Um, but the summer dust shrug has some flex in it. I think it was called wild rose and this is pale rose. Um, originally I was just going to do them all with the pink but I just thought that that autumnal copper burnt orange looked really nice. So that's just a simple cowl. Um, I mean you're not going to wear it if you're going to like Antarctica for a holiday or something for a trek but it, it definitely keeps you warm um, and when I go out with it I just fold back the, the back square ever so slightly just so that it pulls in and then I can zip my coat up but I've actually been wearing this in the house because I've got a really sore throat and a really sore chest and I like having the window open for the fresh air because it helps to clear my head but I don't want the cold on my chest so it's just um, just a nice something to snuggle up in and also I have um, a thyroid deficiency so my neck sticks out ever so slightly like an Adam's apple and I don't like it so this is another way to hide that as well um, there's me telling the whole world what I don't like about myself meh I'm fine with it so that's my second finished object <coughs> it's um I think the autumn, the burnt copper, whatever colour we're going to call that, which by the way is um, Aran weight, which I got from maybe Lidl or something like that such a long time ago. Um, I don't even know if I've got the ball band, but I think that colour really helps tie in the tag. So that's my second finished object. I bet you can't believe it because normally i just show you more whips i've started it's very very rare i show you a finished item i've got four today and these two you didn't even see in progress i just whipped these up um i basically sat and did this in its entirety on saturday and and part of sunday morning because i was having quite a lot of naps and i did this on sunday evening um yeah super productive when I decide to be so they're very quick projects I really enjoyed working with the yarn held um, in three strands because it worked up so quickly so it might I am really tempted to make like a version of enamoured in chunky yarn because it will be super warm and it will work up super quick I mean those two squares look how long they are they're pretty much my body length Oh, maybe I could. So that's the Zuma cowl. This is the Crochet Candyland jumper. Whip number three. Can you guess what it is yet? I finished enamoured. Mm -hmm. I was really pushing myself to get it done because I wanted to wear it to Yarndale, which we're going to get to after this. Um, here it is. Enamoured is finished. It's back in one piece with the, with the new sleeves on it. Um, the only thing I will say is, <laughs> you know like when you cook a Christmas dinner and you spend all day on it and you sit down to eat it and you just think, no hungry. I'm kind of like that with this in that I've spent so long making it, I don't want it near me at the moment. <laughs> oh, so I really hope that passes. Um, I reworked the sleeves so if you've seen the previous ones if not go have a look after this I was really pleased with it but my sleeves were a real bugbear and I have a little bit of a hate relationship with sleeves um, which I definitely want some sort of slogans for that I can put on badges because sleeves just uh, I just don't have any love for them yet I need them in my projects when I made this sleeve originally, I did it in the flat, in the flat and I sewed it together. 
And because of all these colours here, when I sewed it together, it looked like it had been Frankenstein together. And it just, it, it just wasn't right. Um, and I thought, oh, it would be okay. But then when I was showing it on the podcast and I was putting the sleeve up, I was trying to hide the seam. So I thought, well, if I'm trying to hide it, I'm not happy with it. So I reworked it in the round. Um, and that took quite a bit of playing because I just was making it so difficult for myself. When it was in the flat, it was easy enough to increase to the size you wanted. But you couldn't really do that in the round and it looked pretty. So I was really not happy with it. And then I just realised, rather than having one set sleeve that people tweaked for themselves, I would just have different size sleeves for the different patterns. It's not difficult. But I was making it so difficult for myself. <sighs> anyway, I finished them. I do, I do prefer it now because you can look the whole way around and it's continuous. There's no nasty um, Frankenstein sewing that I've done. Um, the only thing with it, the slight bugbear, is that I, I would, I would like to change the fronts on it. I would like to change the fronts. Um, can you remember the original pattern? I did the granny rectangle and I didn't like the centre, it gaped too much. And on this I decided to do, I don't think you're even going to be able to see it, but there's three granny squares hidden in there. And then I went round them. And that's okay. But then when it came to lengthening the pattern to match the size of the square, I was having to add rows on. And again, I just made that so difficult for myself. And so the fronts I would redo in granny stripe like I have for Inspirited, it's stripey partner. And again, I just, I made this so difficult for myself. <laughs> I think it's part of, um, you design something, you really like it, but then you need to tweak it and you don't really want to let go of what you've already put together. And I should have because holding on to it has just created more problems for myself. Um, and my goal is, is to have the best patterns possible not to be so laborious and difficult to meet so I would redo the front in just pure stripe rather than the sort of rectangle I've done around the three squares and also I ran out of yarn uh -huh, I should have ordered three more balls because with all the chopping and doing sleeves and cutting and trying to frog and it snagging up I just didn't have enough yarn and with the front they weren't as long as the back square and so I had to gather it when I was doing it, when I was sewing it up. So they are, it's slightly gathered, which means it hangs a bit further forward than I'd like to. I haven't sewn the ends, all the ends in, I've been wearing it with the ends out because I want to undo it and get some more yarn and change that front. So yeah. I say it's finished and it is finished because I know exactly what I will make and I've got all the measurements and it can actually be sent out now which is great but in order to take photos it's not quite it's not true to the pattern that I'm going to be sending out um, and also <clears throat> I've snagged a stitch just here So I've got to somehow fix that. I, th I um, I think. Oh wow, my voice! I think Darcy jumped up and caught my stitch, because he's got a real big habit of doing that. <sighs> Do you want to see it on? Okay, give me a second. Here it is. Enamoured got this amazing square I love the square I love the back it reminds me of a bomber jacket um, and then his amazing sleeves when I was at Yarndale buying from Vicky Brown's um, store Vicky and her mum both commented on my sleeves and said they're amazing and I was just like oh, wow but anyway we'll get back to that in a minute it's done as you can see I've gathered the sides because these weren't long enough. I don't think it looks all that bad. Um, 
but I would like them to be the proper length so that it's not gathered. But yes, Enamoured is finished. I did put a call out for testers back in September and then with Heather's Health Chronicles and a few other things going on, it just wasn't it just wasn't feasible, which I apologise, I don't want to let anyone down, but equally my head wasn't working. I've had real bad brain fogs and so it just wasn't feasible to get the pattern out. I was speaking to some lovely, lovely people, you know who you are, especially on Instagram. And I was saying, I'm stressing about this now, I want to get it out. And they're saying, you do crochet because you love it. And my brother said this as well. So don't put these extra pressures on yourself and make it more difficult. And also, you know, you're here because you want to connect with these people. So don't then alienate yourself from them because you get annoyed because you've put in all these pressures in place. Like people just want to see you show up and they want to see you happy. So don't do it to yourself. So I didn't get to my goal of re releasing it for September, but we're in October and I could release it now. So it needs final product photos doing. Um, and really this does need some more fronts and then testing. Um, I need a sign up for the size small. So if anybody wants to test this for me, you'll get the pattern for free. Um, and if there's any amendments made to it during testing, then I'll send you the revised version after. Um, I just, all I need you to do is um, test it out for me and take some pictures so that we can share them everywhere. That would be really, really great and really, really useful. Um, another little push that I got, which was really, really nice, is Abigail Rose Crochet. Um, she inboxed me to say, when's Enamoured coming out? Because I'm thinking of the yarns I could use. And I was like, wow. Because I think I'd kind of taught myself out of this pattern because I was like, who's ever going to want to wear this? It's crazy. Like, really? It's not, it's not that modern stylish. It's not on fleek. Is anyone going to want to wear it? Um... You know when you just, you really talk yourself out of something and I was letting my doubts really, really creep in. Um, and then I was like, I'm not really going to wear this when I'm out and about. Which is true, but I did design it as sort of a great big granny hook. And it's more something I'm going to be wearing in the house when I'm chilling out. So that's fine. Like, this fits my design purpose. But she, when she'd messaged me to say she was thinking about what yarn she would use, I just thought, I have to see this through. And then I just sat there and because I was no longer like, I can't do this or this is too much or, you know, all of those things, the sleeves were done within like half a day. They took me months and months of being like, I can't do this, what is going on? It's never going to happen to being like, right, come on, let's just do this. And then within like half a day, sleeve number one was done. I'd wrote out the pattern. Um... Yeah, and I made sleeve number two and, and sewed it all up and wore it to Yarndale. So thank you so much for everybody, Abigail, all of you on Instagram, every, my Patreons as well. Thank you so, so much for all your support and your encouragement because it's really nice to receive that. This bit of hair is really annoying me. Um, and it is done now, so I can actually, actually send it out to testers. Um... I did buy this to Yarndale, but I've got one more finished object. So we're going to finish this segment. Um, do you know what it is? Let me show you. Ah! <laughs> this is finished object number four. Oh, this is the striped version of Enamoured. And I've called it, it kind of gained the name Inspirited and it's never really gone so I'm just going to stay with that so that's Enamoured and this is Inspirited this is the Granny Stripe version of Enamoured um, and I've changed the sleeves ever so slightly so the fronts are the Granny Stripe that I do really like um, it's got because I've made them the same length as the back square there's a lot more material in there for you to really like wrap up in which is really nice 
Um, and then I have, oh, I've changed it slightly. So this, the back, I have done a huge square, the same size as enamoured, um, but I used my HGDC scrap ball challenge and that is um, all of my scrap yarns, it's not all of, some of my scrap yarns um, magic knotted together. I will link up here um, the video to that, the vlog that I did to show you how I make those balls and it used up like 120 odd grams on the back for me and this would be my size small. Then the sleeves are the same as enamoured only they don't have the crazy chunk here, they're completely neutral. Um, apart from the wristbands, which I think are really cute. And then, the elbows. I put patches on them. So I, when I vlogged this the last time, a few videos ago, I had tried to stitch it in and I got the placement all wrong and uh, I knew how I was going to fix it. But then, one of my wonderful, wonderful subscribers, thank you so, so much, um, you commented to say why don't you just make them into patches and I was like hmm, okay that's easier for me because these are the same sleeves as enamoured so I'd already worked out all the measurements so then all I needed to do was just carry on in the body colour and then make my patch so I've got two elbow patches I just love them they just give like a really quirky design um, and I am so tempted to make another one of these purely all in one colour and then just to put patches on. <laughs> but how many cardigans do I need? Hmm, I might make another one. Um, especially as I've also got the measurements for this. Rather than the stripes going that way, they, so rather than going, which way does this run? Horizontal, they go vertically. So I could make one with vertical stripes, all in a body colour, and then just put... Oh, I can see the design in my head already and the accents that I might do. So, what do you think? I love it. Really, I really, really, really like this one, to the point where I actually prefer this more than Enamoured right now. Sorry, enamoured, sorry. Um, but this was just so simple and I'd worked a lot of everything out. And it was just really enjoyable and it's been a real good, like, scrap buster. Um, yeah, what do you think? I'll just, all of the detailing is in the back. Like, there's going to be a collection called Party in the back. Um, and it's got my label on it, of course. So that's my four, four finished objects, which are all wearable garments. I'm loving my greys and pinks, can you tell? So I'm just going to do another costume change and then we're going to go on to Yarndale. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I totally should have mentioned that I'm also going to need testers for Inspirited now. But these live in my wardrobe folded up like that. Look how crazy cool they look. Hmm. I just want to squish them. Right, Yarndale. So today is Friday the 5th of October. And last Saturday, the 29th of September, I went to Yarndale. I'm still wearing my band, which says Yarndale 2018. Um, purely because I want it to come off, but I don't want to cut it because it's going in my journal. So I need to get this toggle off, which I'm going to do with some pliers, but I just I just haven't got around to it, so it's still there. Um, oh, what should I tell you about Yarndale? So, Yarndale is a giant yarn festival in the United Kingdom 
it's in Skipton, which is in the Yorkshire Dales, which is up north. Um, and it's a festival that I've been trying to get to for three years now. So I think the first year I tried to go, I had my appendix out, and so I couldn't go. I couldn't. I couldn't manage to travel. And the second year, I believe I split up with my boyfriend at the time, who was going to travel down with me and just. I think we literally broke up a couple of days before and what I should have done is just said, well, bleep to you and just drove there myself or whatever, got myself there and met up with people. But I wasn't that kind of person in back then, so I didn't go. And then this year, I was like, I have to have to go. So I bought my ticket and my plan was that I was going to get public transport and go and then it turns out a couple of people around me wanted to go and so they were going to drive and then for whatever reasons they couldn't drive and I seriously regret not booking that coach trip seriously regret it because because the plans kept changing it was stressing me out because I was like am I gonna go how am I getting there um which is just it shouldn't bother stressing because it's all going to work out but yeah it was stressing me out and then like the day before I was arranging to get my car emoted so that I could drive up so I went I woke up at like five in the morning realized that the plans had changed again so I spent ages looking for somewhere to get my car emoted I took it to somewhere that I could just book in online I'd never used before it cost me more than what my usual place costs I then had to cancel my usual MOT that I'd already booked in. Uh, it's just extra effort. But anyway, I think the biggest thing for me is because I've not been feeling well and then it was extra that I needed to sort out. I felt tired on the Friday and then on the Saturday, the travel was insane. So not really been feeling great, bits of dizziness, vertigo and just like chronic fatigue um and the driving so I spent like seven hours in the car seven and a half hours it took three and a half hours to get there and four hours back <sighs> so before I even got to Yarndale I was exhausted which is a shame because I've been looking forward to it for three years and I got there and really I just wanted to sit down um so I did my usual thing though where I got there and I wandered all around everywhere to see what was there before committing to buying anything because you know when you get in somewhere and you buy straight away and then you get to the end and you think, oh, if only I had some money left. So I weaved my way in and out all around it all. Um, it's so much colder up north, guys, so much colder. So I did actually get the shuttle bus back to the car to put on some more clothes, like leggings, hoodie, and then I put enamoured back on top, went back into the place. Um, because of the time it took to get there, so there was some slight road works, um, and just little things like that, little delays. We got there about 12, and then there was supposed to be a picnic at half 12, which I really wanted to go to and meet everyone. But then because I just wasn't feeling myself, I just I didn't really want to sit and chat which is such a shame because I would have met so many amazing people there so I didn't go to that um so that is my sole reason for if I was to go back to Yarndale it would be so that I could go and do the picnic and join in with the more social aspect which is one of the main reasons why I was why I was going and I didn't do it um and also like I got there later than anticipated I wanted to be there when it opened at 10 and we got there nearer 12 after the shuttle bus and all of that and I was a bit like I have to get around this yarn festival is there going to be nothing left nothing which is um yeah I was definitely being over dramatic in my own little brain but <laughs> um so I didn't do the picnic so I'm hoping to see other people's vlogs I can see the footage of that and see what it was like um so I wandered around saw everything that I really liked and was like making mental notes we nipped back to the car to put some more clothes on because boy oh boy was it cold and then um I went back in and I had my game plan and knew what I wanted to purchase 
Now, I was solely going to Yarndale to get giveaway prizes and for the social side of it. I didn't do the social side of it, which is such a shame. Um, I just didn't have the energy. It took all of my energy just to be standing upright towards the end of it. Like, I was leaning against whatever wall or whatever I could. It was just absolutely exhausted. Needed to sleep. Um, so, I wasn't going to buy myself anything because... I've been super, super careful with my money because of what's going on with my health. Um, my wages haven't been what they normally are. And also I've got this huge stash, so I don't need to be greedy. Um, but I spoke to my mother in the morning. I was like, I don't want to go. Uh, there was actually tears. I don't want to go. I don't want to drive that far. I'm so tired. I don't feel well. And then, you know, with a little pep talk and some zhush, I was like, okay, okay, I'm going to do this. Um, and then she gave me a little bit of money as well. So thank you so much. Um, which was enough for me to then get, with a little bit that I added in, it was enough to get sweaters quantity of yarn. So I'll show you that now. I got this yarn from Polo & Co. It's a French company. Now, as I was walking around, I was... I really, really liked all of the brights. Um, you know, I love my sock minis, the sock yarn, but I've got quite a lot of that. And I really wanted something I could make a jumper out of or a cardigan. And I was really, really drawn to the neutrals, you guys, like, seriously. Um, and if you're a Patreon, you'll see that I've posted like a, a mood board of colors that I really like. And when I saw, there was a few like yarn stores that had more neutral, undyed, and I was really drawn towards them. And when I saw this yarn and the price, I was like, I gotta get me some. Originally bought five balls, and then I went back, five skeins, sorry, and I went back and I got a six. And I could see the vendor, she was like, oh, you're back. And I was holding my bag out, so she probably thought I was trying to give it back. And I was like, I need more. Um, so I got six balls of it. It was only five euros, 50, five pound 50, sorry skein it, it had the, the comma in it because it was typed up by a European person and I got six balls of it skeins six skeins of it so I got this Polo and Co wool oh it looks lovely um it's called <clears throat> I don't actually know what that is it's called mas mascot um, I don't have a French accent at all. Oh, there we go. And that's the colourway. Oh, are you going to focus? Mm, oh, come on. I don't know how you say it. I'm not even going to try it. Um, but it is 100% wool. 100 gram skeins it's wa worsted weight which is iron and it recommends a four to five mil needle and it says french manufacturing wool carded and spun in france natural colors are due to the different fleeces used this wool has suffered no dye hand washed only before knitting so it's undyed natural fleece and yeah look at that it is so it is, like, the base colour is a grey. But then it's got flecks of oatmeal and, like, a cream in it. Um, and it's just gorgeous. It is showing up really well. So I got six skeins of this. Yay, skeins, finally saying it right. Um... So I have 600 grams of this yarn Ooh. and oh, I'm really pleased with it because this is going to be either a cardigan or a jumper. I don't know what pattern I'm going to use. I don't know if I'm going to make it up myself. All I know is that I wanted enough to make a garment and I have done that. And then they really kindly put it in this bag for me as well. So 
So I've got another tote bag, which is great. Um, let me put these away. So I am really, really pleased with that. I won't be starting it anytime soon. It is going to go away in stash um, until I have either come up with a design or found a pattern that I really want to use. Um, because it's so nice and it's iron weight, I would quite like to do like a keyboard pattern. So I might, I might raid my grandmother's stash of patterns because she's got, she's been saving patterns since, I don't know, I don't even know how old she is. She must be in her seventies. She's been saving patterns forever. So I was thinking of taking one of those patterns and then using it so doing a, a traditional pattern but in that yarn or making my own but I don't know what I would make and that's quite a special yarn so for now it's just going in the stash um but yeah I'm really really pleased with that I really really like the colour it's gonna make a really really nice design um I've got my Yarndale program Yarndale with the sheep on it and that sheep I actually got as a pin badge so that was one of my enhancements I wanted to get was a pin so I've got the Yarndale sheep and that is the Edinburgh Yarn Festival woolly hat and that's my yak badge so that's all my badges that are yarn related and then down here I've got some vegan ones and my Gryffindor one I would love to have more Harry Potter ones but for now, that's what I've got. I'd love to have more knitting ones as well, obviously. And there's some stitch markers there. But that sheep is now my pin badge. So I'm really pleased with that. So from Yarndale, I got myself a jumpers quantity, sweater quantity of yarn, and my pin badge. Uh, and then once I'd got those, I'd also been looking around for ideas for my giveaway prizes. I want to do two giveaways. Giveaway number one is for YouTube because we reached 500 subscribers. Though by the time this goes out, I think we'll have about 600. So yay! Thank you so much for joining me. And just as a bit of a, a token of appreciation, I wanted to get a giveaway for that. And uh, when I did my vlog on 500 subscribers, I did say that I'd get the giveaway prizes at Yarndale so that I could see what was there and not have to pay postage so I could put more money into the actual giveaway and then I've got a Patreon giveaway as well um, because I truly truly appreciate what my patrons do for me and I want to make sure that you are um, kind of like not rewarded but I just want you to know how grateful I am so there's a Patreon giveaway as well so for the YouTube giveaway. And again, I haven't thought of the question. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, I need to think of a question. I knew there was something I hadn't done in my planning. <laughs> I'm just gonna get a drink of water because my throat is and then I'm going to think of my question and I'm going to show you the giveaway prizes. So for the YouTube giveaway, I've put together this little um, bundle. You've got this turquoise mini by River Knits. You've got this bright pink mini by Martin's Lab. It's a tough sock mini, 75% merino, superwash merino, 25% nylon. And it's 20 grams in hot fuchsia, which make an amazing contrast. And then this amazing, let's put it the right way around, stitch marker to go with it. Which is the Mermaid Scales, which was made for me for one of my subscription boxes. So this is... You, this giveaway is open to all of my YouTube subscribers, so if you want to enter, all you need to do is make sure you've subscribed to this video and then I want you to post below um, some 
encouraging words or an affirmation. So you can put anything like, for an affirmation, I am living my most creative life, anything like that. Um, or for encouraging words, um, anything like, I'm proud of you, be proud of you, anything like that, just something motivational. I am then going to use um, a random.org or one of those pickers to use the comment picker so that one of my wonderful YouTube subscribers can win this giveaway, which is amazing. Um, what I'm also going to do with some of the comments, as many of them as I can, the, the um, comments that you're going to put to enter the giveaway, I'm then going to put on my cards for the HGDC Patch of Happy. So this is something I've started where I go on a square drop and I drop off these granny squares. I just attach them to a bit of yarn onto my business card. And on the back, on this one, I've put sending support and it's then got my hashtag. I don't know if it's going to show because there we go, sending support. And then on, oopsie, this one, it says, just simply says smile. Um, so whatever comments you put will then give me more inspiration to put on my next lot of these that I make up. So if you want to enter the giveaway to win two sock minis and a custom stitch marker in this amazing colorway, comment below. Um, healing words, affirmations, words of encouragement, anything positive and make sure you're subscribed and if you want to click like then go ahead as well. So that's the one giveaway for YouTube and then if you are a Patreon, so I have a Patreon account which I will link below um, and on there you can subscribe from as little as a dollar a month or um, I put the standard tier at three dollars, but you can sign up for just one dollar if you want to. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm thinking of changing that where it's just one dollar minimum, and if you want to give more, then you can do. I haven't looked into that yet, but anyway, the minimum sign up is a dollar. The um, suggested sign up is three dollars, which means I get about two pound fifty after the fees and whatnot. Um, and Patreon is a way of people supporting creatives. So it's a way of you being able to support the channel, HGDC, and everything that I'm trying to do with it. So it's um, going to be able to enable me to go to more yarn festivals because I'll have the spondulas to do it and be able to take you with me and show you more vlogs. Um, I also will be able to create more patterns because I'll be able to invest in tech editors and testing and all that sort of thing that goes along with it and also just because I love HGDC dearly and I put a lot of time into it and I like my Instagram and all my other platforms to be places of encouragement and empowerment and so by you feeding that encouragement into me I can give it back. So if you're interested in signing up to Patreon, the links will be below. I've got a Patreon only giveaway. So if you want to join this, you need to sign up to Patreon. Um, and this, I originally, I was going to buy this for me, I'm not going to lie. And then I just thought, I need to make sure my patrons have got something and I can get myself something else another time. So whoever gets this, love it, cherish it, look after it. I hit up the Vicky Brown's Designs store, which was on my plan of attack, and I have got to give is this black crocheter pencil bag. It's a project bag um, from Stitcher Tees, which Vicky Brown set up with her sister. Um, it's got the flat bottom, which I absolutely love because it was it's gonna sit flat when it's got your project in it, and it's also got this mini to go with it, so it's hot pink four ply sock yarn, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon and it's this sort of ombre within it. It's so bright, it's just blowing out but it's gorgeous. So patrons, you are within a chance to win. 
this crochet bag and it's also got this hot pink mini which I again as I said I really wanted for myself and when I was buying my giveaway prizes I did select items that I thought I would like to have because then I thought you lot would like to have it so difficult to buy something when you don't actually know who's going to win it so you don't know the intended recipient um, so you don't really know what they like so I just thought you must like what I like because you're here right so yeah this is for the Patreon giveaway and um, to enter that I'm going to put a post up um, and you need to comment below um, again I would really like to see something healing or encouraging um, I know you've got double the work to think of two things because if you enter this one put something healing and encouraging and then if you enter Patreon put something healing and encouraging I just really feel like I need that in my life right now so um, if you want to join in with this one then you need to join up as a Patreon and then it will give you access to the Patreon only posts and then you'll be able to comment below as well but oh, I just love it I love that gold foil and the mini. I wonder if I can get the mini to show up a bit better. Oh, bingo. So it's got like really hot pink pops and then like a paler pink. Um, that is enough there for you to do contrasting toes, heels and cuffs on socks. Or you can start your own um, blanket or whatever you want to do. Let me know what you do with it because it's amazing. I've never had any of her yarn before, so you know full well I'm going to get myself some of this one day. So that is two giveaways for Patreon and YouTube. Um, yeah, comment below, get involved. I can't wait to draw the winners. The winners I'm going to draw in a couple of weeks' time. Um, so this is going out tonight, 5th of October. So mid-October, that gives you a couple of weeks to enter. They're gonna be go getting sent out. Um, I'm really excited and I'm not even winning anything. <laughs> but I love, love, love wrapping up the parcels and sending them out. Like, I love getting happy mail, so I love, love, love putting together really cute parcels to send out to you. So of course, um, as there always is with my giveaways, there are other little, tiny little items, you know, like some some little sweets and some other stitch markers to go in with them. So yeah, can't wait to see what all your healing words are gonna be as well. Can't wait to soak them all up. <laughs> Send them on over. Yeah. It's so cold! <laughs>
Um, another year just because part of me didn't enjoy it for factors that weren't Yarndale's fault so I would definitely definitely from now on book public transport to my yarn festivals I did it for Edinburgh Yarn Festival and I was gonna do the coach trip here here to Yarndale and I definitely would do that um, there was a few people that did post on Instagram that said that the travel had taken it out of them as well. It's not the most accessible place It's quite a long time in the car and when you're not feeling well, you're then exhausted And then I spent my entire time whilst I was walking around thinking oh, I've got to drive back Like that's a long car journey and on the way back we hit an accident Which meant we were on the M1 for over an hour in standstill you know, and if I had been on public transport, it would have been annoying, but I could have read or I could have been crocheting. Um, I went all the way to Edinburgh Yarn Festival. Uh, no, I didn't. I went all the way to Yarndale and I did one row of knitting and that's it. Which is not a good balance, is it? So I would definitely go back, but I would. I am without a doubt from now on booking public transport so that I know that I'm going to get there, that it's taken care of, you don't have to rely on anyone, and it's just stress-free. Um, I did really enjoy that about Edinburgh Yarn Festival. And then I hopefully will be feeling better the next time a yarn festival comes round. So I'll have the energy to walk around, um, you know, and people were commenting like, oh, I really like your cardigan. And I just didn't have the energy to be like, like I was being polite and I'd say thank you. But I just didn't have the energy to be like, this is my design. Do you want to hear about it? I, just, I didn't have that in me. And that was just really disappointing. Um, so then after getting the giveaway stuff, I then... Um, when I got food from a pub, I normally eat vegan, but I went full out and got meat because I was like, I need everything within my body possible to give me that little bit of energy to get me back. Um, and then, yeah, we hit the accident. So, and I hope whoever was in that accident because they hit the central reservation was okay. And I'm so, so grateful that I wasn't in an accident, but me oh my that really took it out of me um and I already had like a slight like I was feeling a bit of a cold coming on before but then since then I've had like the full on chest the full on cough sore head which is not great because I want to go back to work and um I just seem to be constantly ill but yeah like there was so many great things to see there was some great stores I did find it a little bit strange because it's in a cattle market. Some of it was really cramped and really dark, which again, because I wasn't feeling well, I didn't want to be in a cramped, dark space. I just wanted to curl up somewhere warm. Um, but there are other festivals out there that I know are better spaced out. I don't think I'm gonna do any more yarn festivals this year. There is another one in Nottingham, but I've got quite a lot of stash stuff anyway. Um, and I've got a few other things going on in my life, um, so I, I, I'm not, I'm, I don't think I'll be going, but there is always next year. I do really, really want to go back to Edinburgh Yarn Festival in the March, so I'd rather put a little bit of money aside between now and then, so I've got something to actually, like, spend when I'm there, um, and 
uh, last year, this year, I met my friend Nicole there and I had such a great time. So I'd love to see her again there. And I'd like to go back as a vlogger. So yeah, yarn festivals are great when you have a little bit of spending money and you're feeling tip top. Um, I still had so much fun. I was giving out my squares HD, HDDC patch of happy. And I got comments that people have found them. So that's great. Um, that made me feel really, really good. So yeah, I would definitely recommend that you go see Yarndale. Um, and I just know for me, public transport, um, have everything organized in advance and hopefully be feeling so much better. And I'll just have an amazing time. Um, yeah, I think I've told you all of that like a hundred million times now. Yarndale. When I was on the shuttle bus, um, I sat by myself and a lovely Lisa came and sat with me and she said, oh, I'm going to sit next to you because I was watching you on YouTube this morning. So that was pretty cool. Um, I love moments like that. That's the first ever time anybody's ever come up to me and said they watched the channel and she said she'd been watching it that morning and that she'd recognise me as she walked along the queue. And as she walked by, I did see a smile at me and I just thought, oh, that's a very nice, friendly person. And then she said that, um, yeah, she's been watching my channel. So thank you so much. And she said she was going to subscribe. So I hope you're here and I hope you had a really good time and brought loads and loads of goodies. I saw you uh, wandering around about 20 minutes after we'd gone in, but I didn't see you again after that. So let me know in the comments below what you ended up buying. Um, and I gave her the first square of the day as well, which is really, really cool. Um, and then other people, as I was walking around, were really friendly and like saying that they liked my enamored cardigan jacket. Um, people were really friendly and really talkative and that's why I love going to places like that. So if anybody saw me walking around and I looked a bit miserable, I'm sorry, I don't wanna rain on your parade. But I was a little bit miserable, I'm not going to lie. Um, but hopefully the next time I go to one, I'll be in much better spirits. Fingers crossed. I think I've told you everything. I feel like there's something else that I should be letting you know. Good not it's been a long mammoth one. I can see my recording time. And although I've done part of it in segments, these are chunky. So if you're still here, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you've enjoyed seeing all my finished objects because I am so proud of me right now. Um, I hope you are excited for the patterns. If you are, then um, let me know. I am going to get them tested. Um, I can really do this now. It feels good and it feels like a big weight's been lifted. Um, I am going to go and work on more whips because I don't have many on the go anymore now. <laughs> I've, I've finished a lot which is great because I was speaking to Nicole about Edinburgh Yarn Festival and we've both said our stashes are getting a little bit ridiculous and so we are going to both take pictures of the yarn that we want to use up on what projects we intend to make by the time yarn out. Um, I'm doing it again. Edinburgh Yarn Festival comes around so that we can go there and buy, buy, buy all of the stuff. So yeah, finished objects, amazing um, giveaways and yarn day. I think I've told you everything. If I've forgotten, I'll just record another bit. So thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure you enter um, the Patreon and the YouTube giveaways. I can't wait for those to be drawn. And I will see you all again soon. Thank you for watching. Happy making.